what's going on guys Magnolia Mo here and welcome back to my channel I recently did an unboxing and a review of the Pioneer Elite VSX LX505 that you see behind me in this video I'm going to go over uh, some of my learnings right when I ran direct live right so the the review and the unboxing that I did I touched on direct at a high level um, and this is more of a detailed uh, video on what the best practices are and, or how do you get the best readings right with direct direct is more involved than Odyssey with direct you have uh, two options you can use with the pioneer you can use the pioneer remote app uh, or you can set it up you know via a PC uh, using a calibrated microphone right like a Umic one or in my case I have the Omnimic so using the Omnimic uh, with Direct obviously uh, and the Pioneer it took a little bit of learning right and I had to work a little bit harder to get to get the gains right and make sure that the room was absolutely quiet any bit of noise or anything that was going on it would you know kind of screw up the the measurement it would throw up uh, all kinds of errors you know one of the errors I got was uh, that the measurement was successful but one instance was not measured correct but the Omni mic did produce a whole lot better results than the mic that comes with the Pioneer and then the other thing that I recommend that we do before running direct if you have two subs the 505 does not support individual sub calibration okay like odyssey does so so it's just going to set uh you know a single trim level for both the subs you're going to have to adjust the trim levels of the two subs so that they are at the same uh, volume level in relation to the rest of the speakers before you run direct you can use an old style Radio Shack SPL meter. I use the SPL meter to quickly bring the two subs at the same volume. So that's learning number one here, right? You got it because it doesn't support multiple subs. Uh, it's just one trim level. You have to make sure that both those subs have the same volume, you know, in relation to the rest of your speakers. Here are the before and after Omni mic frequency responses of the subs. Let's get started with the direct live setup using a PC. When you start the app, you'll see your device. You go ahead and you select the device. In this case, it's the Pioneer LX505. Here's the splash screen. You get to select from the different mics. I am going to go ahead and select the Omni mic. There is no calibration file. As you can see, you left click and then you load the calibration file from your PC. For any other mic, like a U-Mic 1, you would need to do the same. Download the 90 degree calibration file because that's what's needed for the calibration purposes here. Once you have the calibration file loaded, you move to the next step, which is volume calibration. In this step, it is critical that we don't spend a lot of time here, right? Because I spent like 30 minutes in here uh, in this particular section trying to uh, level match every speaker. That's not what's needed over here. All we need to do is make sure that sound is output from every speaker and the overall volume is at a comfortable listening level. The other thing in here is that you do not need to adjust the subwoofer, right? Direct will do that for us. We can validate the trim levels later on after the calibration is completed. And that is my learning headline number two. Make sure there is sound output from all the speakers. Volume level is at a comfortable listening level. No need to adjust the volume of the subwoofer since it was done earlier. Next step is to figure out where your room's noise level is. Since I have everything turned off, I only have this PC running, the overall noise level or the noise floor is at negative 41.4 dB. You will need to set the volume 30 dBs above the noise floor. So it was at minus 41, right? Plus 30 is minus 11 dB is where each of your speakers needs to be at when it comes to the volume right so right now the volume is at minus 61.5 so i'm going to increase this first i'm going to click on the left speaker i'm going to increase this okay that's it 
you can adjust the gain of your mic as well uh, to to bring overall noise in your room down right so for instance it's at zero right now so minus 50 okay minus 50 is where it's at so technically speaking minus 50 plus 30 db at minus 20 when it comes to the speaker trim level and you see right right there it brought the trim level down to minus 19.9 right i'm going to increase it a little bit and that's it so you leave the front left where it is and then you do the same for the center front right surround left surround right surround back uh, and you don't adjust the subwoofer and you do the same for all of the remaining speakers. So I'm not gonna touch the subwoofer, but let's just see where it's at. It's about 10, 9 dB lower, so we will leave it right there. Now that the volume has been set, it is time to select the arrangement. So you have focused imaging, this is narrow room correction, right? Uh, which measures this entire couch area's 13 measurement positions. You have the wide imaging, which is, you know, for multiple seats, 17 measurement positions. <laughs> I went with the targeted position. Now let's talk about the fun stuff. Let's go over the various measurement positions and microphone placement uh, that I used in order to take these measurements. So I have the mic in the main listening position um, and this is the most critical of the, the steps, right? You have to get your main listening position done right uh, and then everything else follows suit, right? So main listening position, this is where my head is going to be. That is the starting point. So let's start with the first one, which is the most important one. successfully measured and now it's gonna ask you to measure your front top right so for the top right what I did was um, you don't have to be completely exact this is 22 inches you know from the bottom of that couch right so I was raising it about eight inches six to eight inches so the way I did it was that arm the same and turn this right over right, so now so 22 so eight inches would be about 30 inches, right? So, so that would be your top right position. I, I have done it multiple times. Uh, and, um, and every time I ran it, I got better results. This is where I got the best uh, output from my subwoofer, believe it or not, and from my heights, right? So this is your top right position. So now the top right is done for top left. This is why I like this stand. This is boom. That's it. Now we got to do bottom right, bottom left. So that's four here, four here. The bottom, I would lower this for the bottom right. Right. So we were at 22. We are roughly around 15. So now do your bottom right in that spot right there. All right. So now that's done. All you got to do is now move this to the left. And that's your bottom left. So now for the top rear right. So we need to be at 46. And then from the main listening position, I am about 22 inches. Right? It's fine. You don't need to, like I said, you don't need to go too crazy with direct. As long as you're leaving uh, enough distance to separate your bottom and your top. Uh, listening positions. All right, so this is going to be the rear top right. So you get the point. So now, same thing, I'm going to run it for the, the rear top left and then for my bottom right. So what I did was I lowered the couch, right? And now seven inches, six inches below that listening spot. Yeah, 35. Okay, 36, sorry. So, so that is our bottom right. We take all of the measurements. I'm not going to bore you with all the spots, but the key there was, you know, you keep enough separation between uh, the various measurement points. And I'm measuring nine, you know, spots here uh, around the main listening position. Okay. Once you've taken all the measurements, 
it's time for filter design. Direct goes through, designs your face correction filter, gain, delays, magnitude response filter, and once all of that is complete, this is what you get. You have uh, your speaker groupings on the right, you have your measured response in relation to the target curve, that's the target curve, and you have your corrected response, right? This is the corrected response, and that was the measured response. In here, you also have your curtains. You can limit your EQ, you can limit it to the shorter frequency if you like, to 500 hertz, or you can apply the room correction to the full spectrum. Now, speaker groupings, if you don't like any of these groupings, you can always ungroup them, right? So you can take the front left and put it with the center if you like. For me, it doesn't matter. You know, I have my speakers are CT7.4s for my left, center, right, and surround, and then I have CT7.5s for my back surround. So, so the way these groupings are done are accurate, right, and and correct in my opinion. So I did not need to to adjust, or I did not need to move any groupings around. There are two shelves. There's the left, and then there's the right. This is for your sub bass to mid bass, and then this is for your uh, mids to your high frequencies, right? And 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 you can uh, customize this target curve, you know, if you like, by boosting, right? And every time you boost, you can see direct goes and designs the magnitude filter again. If you're not satisfied with the shelves, you can pick individual points, right? And try to apply correction or try to boost those, those frequencies as I just did. Now, once you've designed your filter, you can go in and you can save your project, give it a name. And then once you've done that, you can, you can export the filter to your AVR. And this is learning number three is that when you export the filter, the speaker sizes would all have been reverted to large. So you're going to have to go back into the menu of the receiver and change the crossovers, you know, apply the crossovers uh, accurately, right? For instance, for my for the CT 7.4s, I go with the 80 hertz crossover and that's what I ended up doing, right? Otherwise, everything was set to large. Let's look at the A1 EVO frequency responses via Odyssey and the direct live frequency responses. I'm going to bring the left speaker first. So left, this is the A1 EVO. And then here is the left via direct live. This is the A1 EVO. And this one right here, the white is the direct live frequency response. So A1 EVO does slightly better in the high frequency. Direct live is actually more stable and more even. And then once you get into the mid to low mids and then the, the base region, right? Uh, I think this is where I find the benefits of direct live from 100 Hertz to one kilohertz, just one major dip right here, right? To me, A1 EVO had a huge spike in the sub bass region, but then there was also this null around the 80 Hertz uh, range. I think overall, A A1 EVO was very good. Direct live, I think it takes it to the next level over here. Okay, so this is the left speaker. Now let's compare the subwoofer frequency responses. This is direct live and this is A1 EVO. A1 EVO kind of started rolling off around 17.83 Hertz, whereas I'm still getting good, strong output via direct live all the way until 15, 15 Hertz. And it's more, it's smoother in that sub bass region and with, with minimal spikes, as you can see, and then it rolls off, right? So let's do some real time measurements using OmniMic. This is one tenth, one twelfth smoothing. This is the frequency response of the left speaker. What did I say? 15.6 is when the roll off starts. Look how smooth this is, okay? All the way. So I'm going to take an average of this and save this. That's your left. This is your right. 
very close because the subs they're gonna be very similar through the crossover region and then you know start to differ a little bit so you can see there's not a lot of difference up until 80 hertz and then obviously the placement of the speaker in the room is gonna is gonna yield a few different results right here's the lfe All right, now we're gonna do some interesting stuff, okay? Take an average. All right, and I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna actually turn off Room EQ. Look at that. So what's the main thing that we see? Okay, so right about here, direct is adding more, right? Starting from 18 Hertz to, to 26 Hertz, getting, 3 dB higher and then it's the target curve right that's gonna create more bass in the sub bass region and then you come down right gradually no no peaks like look at this huge peak 70 Hertz this is you've, if you've seen my other videos I think this is why I get the null uh, is because there's way too much energy in that 70 Hertz range and then there is a null here at about 50 Hertz when you try to fix those you get the null in that 90 Hertz range all right now let's take a look at some Omni mic bass sweeps this is where it starts to roll off 15.53 Hertz look how nice and even this is all the way to 70 and then into the crossover frequency I hope you guys found this video useful I would recommend, you know, if you can get a get your hands on a U mic one or even the Omni mic system that I have, that will help, you know, in getting better calibration or post calibration results. As usual, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.